Hello and welcome. I'm going to uh, do beginner puzzles on chess.com for anyone who's wanting to learn wanting to learn tactics. I'm going to choose uh, what I did was uh, I went to puzzles on chess.com. You have to have an account. Puzzles. Uh, puzzles again. And when you have the puzzle mode, there are different modes. So p training rated allows you, for example, I have a rating of over 2,000 with a record of 22, 23. Um, your rating goes up or down as you get puzzles uh, right or wrong. Um, if you do learning, it's not rated, and you can choose what you want to learn. If you choose rated, you, you have to include all puzzles. For learning, no rating, no clock, no pressure. I can choose what themes I want to do. There's a lot. <clears throat> In this case, I'm going to, I chose the rating range is the key. I'm going to include all puzzles for now, but rating range from one to a thousand. So any rate, any puzzle below a thousand, uh, I think the lowest is like a hundred. They give the easiest puzzles, they give a hundred, but I'm just choosing one to one thousand. So all puzzles will be below a thousand. Okay. And I'll explain my process and see how it goes. These should be all easy for me. And I'll explain for anyone that's willing to learn. Okay. So, the move here. I, I can do these arrows right here to move back and forth. It always shows the last move of the computer, which is always a bad move for these puzzles. You know it's a bad move and you have to learn how to exploit it. So, that's how you recognize patterns. In a real game, it's a lot harder because no one's telling you, Hey, he made a bad move. You have something here. But with puzzles, they train you, and then you learn to recognize patterns. So in this case, he took this pawn, attacking my queen. Okay? And at first, it looks like, okay, I can't take the rook because it's defended by the by the pawn. Okay? But uh, just as a general rule, there's a lot of, there's some math involved when doing chess. You have to evaluate when pieces are exchanged. You evaluate if you come out ahead, even, or behind. If you come out behind in the transaction, then you shouldn't do it. If you come out ahead, it means you want a piece or you want a stronger piece for a weaker piece called winning the exchange. So in this case, it looks, uh, it's just, so just, just to give you a basis, pawns are worth one point. Knights and bishops are worth three points. They're about equal. Okay. okay. Uh, rooks are worth five points and the queen is worth nine points. <clears throat> and the king, priceless. So, in this case, at first, it looks like I shouldn't take a five-point piece because I will lose a nine-point piece. But this is a this pawn is pinned because, as you can see right here, this black queen is undefended. So if this pawn were to move out of the way, I can take the queen. So it's a pseudo sacrifice because of a pin. If I I actually can take this rook, initially it looks bad, but you can't. In this case, I can take it because if he were to take me. I get my queen back. So in the end, the, qu the queens were exchanged, and I won a rook. Okay, one more time. Take rook, pawn takes back, queen takes rook, and that's it. Winning a rook in the end. Okay, so it didn't require me to finish the puzzle, but it's important to understand the puzzle. It just says, okay, you did it, congratulations, but if you don't understand why, then it's pointless. So... That's why, is what my explanation before. If he can't take, because I will get the queen back. So then he has to do some other move, and my queen can retreat somewhere safely, and I just want a rook. So either way, I win a rook is the point. Okay, this is the theme, and it's called a pin. The pawn was pinned to the queen. A pin is when a piece cannot move out of the way, or a stronger piece will be captured behind it. In this case, the queen. All right, next puzzle. This is your streak, your winning streak. This fire, as long as I get them all right, which I should, if they're all below a thousand. Okay, queen moves down. <clears throat> In this case, okay. All right, and these aren't super, super. E I mean, they're easy for me, but they're not super easy if you're just getting started. In this case, um, I have two attackers on this knight, but he also has two defenders. So it seems like no big deal at first. However, I can exchange, I can remove, this is this tactic is called remove the defender. If I take 
it's it, first of all, it's check. He has to respond to check. Okay. So he can't take with the queen because then I will win the queen for a bishop, yeah. and he he shouldn't do that because the queen's more valuable. It's worth nine points for a nine point piece for a three point piece. So if I take here, then he will take back with the bishop. Now if I take back, then he just takes back, and it was it was it was all equal exchanges, a knight and a bishop for a knight and a bishop. Sometimes that's okay in a game if it leads to a favorable position, but these are puzzles, and so normally they uh, normally there's you're, there's an opportunity to win a piece or to checkmate. In this case, I can remove a defender, so it's about I can take here and he takes back, but I do not take the knight immediately because he has a defender. So what I do is I remove the defender. I exchange the queens off the board. I take the queen. He has to take back with a pawn. Now the queen's no longer defending this knight. Oops, no longer defending this knight. Okay, so it takes, takes, equal change, equal exchange, and then takes, takes, equal exchange. This knight, uh, the bishop's here now. This bishop is no longer defended, and then I can just pick it off, and thusly winning a bishop. So takes, like I said, don't take yet because he will take back. It. Trade the queens off first. He has to. He has to get his queen back, and then I just want a free bishop. Okay, eight hundred. Maybe. Huh. It's still a long sequence. If yep, theme like I said, remove the defender. Okay. We'll see how this goes. Um, if this puzzles, if these puzzles are a little complicated for the beginner, uh, let me know in the comments, and maybe I can do one with uh, under five hundred to get started. So. All right, let's do another one. Bishop there. Okay, this is a discovered attack. Rook can come up here, check. And then the bishop is now able to capture the queen. Okay? But, if I do that, if I take and he takes with rook, I don't take the, once again, I don't take the queen immediately because then he'll take my queen. So then I will, queen will take the other rook and then when bishop takes, then I get my queen. It's all about move order. Okay, so rook up, check. But don't take the queen yet. Because then he just gets the queen back. And then it was just an exchange of pieces. It was equal. These, the point of these puzzles is to win a piece and, get, and gain an advantage. So I will go up, check again. And then I will recover the queen. And then as you can see, I have an extra rook. That should be enough to win the game. Okay. This theme discovered attack. There were some other themes involved. Okay. I'm starting to think that this might be complicated for the absolute beginner. They're easy for me. They're all under 1,000. But maybe I need to do under 500 um, for the ultimate beginner. But just let me know if this is too complicated. All right. Okay. Pawn takes my knight. Okay, so if I take back with this pawn, this is a discovered check. By taking this pawn, it's moving out of the way, and it creates a check. White has to respond to this check somehow. Um, no, and no matter how he responds, whether he moves the king out of the way, blocking with the queen would be bad, because then I win a rook for a queen. So check. This king's going to have to move somewhere. And then it's also, a, so it's a discovered check, but it's also a discovered attack on this bishop that's undefended. So it's important to recognize undefended pieces in your enemy's camp. Pieces that are undefended have a potential to be captured. Or if they, or if not captured, at least they're forced to move or be defended, which means you're, you're initiating and you're, you're attacking and your opponent's defending. But for these puzzles, there's always something to win. So this is the solution. Takes discovered check. The king has to move out of the way, and I win a bishop. Okay, and he can save he can save the rook in the corner by moving the knight here. But either either way, I want a piece. Okay, discovered attack. Okay, now this is the first one where we have a checkmate. This is a back ring checkmate. Uh, I have this is called a battery when you have two pieces, uh, a, two rooks or a rook and a queen on the same 
file or a bishop and a queen on the same diagonal. In this case, this is our battery, this whole powerhouse right here. And so I can't go here because he'll take me. And But I can go, uh, the point is to get to deflect the king into the corner and then I can do a sacrifice for the checkmate. Queen up here, check. King has to move over here. Queen moves up again. Then when queen moves there, check. Sacrificing yourself. The only way for him to get out of check is to take with the rook, followed by the rook taking back checkmate. Okay. So check, check, checkmate. Mate in three. Okay. This puzzle, finally, 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 this is just a checkmate in one. Rook moves up here and it's checkmate. The rook covers all here and the bishop covers the one escape square. Potential escape square, so checkmate. That's it. <laughs> just a mate in one. Nothing to it, just checkmate in one. No sequence to fit configure. Okay. Ah, so... I can't, this knight moved here. I can't take this knight because the queen will take me. But I can block that diagonal. I can move this pawn up attacking the queen and cutting, and what do you, what do you call it? Cutting off the, uh, I'm severing the connection between the two pieces. The queen's no longer defending the knight. And so when the queen moves to safety, I, get to, I can pick off the knight for free. That's it. I rem oh, okay, it was remove the defender. In this case, it was chasing the queen away. Sometimes removing the defender requires a sacrifice because um, you're going to win something bigger afterwards. In this case, it was just scaring the queen away so I can win the piece. Okay, knight here. It looks bad at first because it's attacking my, knight, my rook and my queen, both worth more than a knight. Three-point piece attacking a nine-point piece and a five-point piece. This is called a fork. Okay, but since it's my move and this is a puzzle, there's a way to get out of this somehow. And it's because I have checkmate in one. Moving queen up here. This is the bat the battery I was talking about uh, before. Queen queen moves up here, checkmate. Okay. So yeah, remember the last move by the computer. The first move by the computer is always a bad move, and you got to learn how to exploit it. Hmm. So at first it looks like a free rook, right? Sometimes these beginner puzzles are just free pieces that are hanging. Hanging means that it's undefended. But if I take it, he can take this rook and then I'm checkmated on the back row. Okay. So you do you change the move order. Take here first check. He'll take back and then you win the free piece. So th so this was a bad move by white, but if I take back that's a even worse move called the blunder. It loses the game. So I reverse the order. Check. He no longer has the checkmate threat and I win the rook for free. Zwischenzug. Zwischenzug is German for in between, uh, in between move. In between move, meaning I wanted to take the rook for free, but I couldn't, so I have to do a move in between, an in between move. Then I can do my original intended move. So that's called a, that theme is called Zwischenzug. So yeah, sometimes it's just that. Sometimes it's a check, sometimes it's a capture, and then you can do what you want to do. <laughs> All right, queen here. Okay, this bishop guards this diagonal. My queen can come over here, check. The rook has to block, and then the queen can take the rook checkmate. This is checkmate in two. Check, the rook blocks, and I take for checkmate. Okay. And feel free to, uh, if, it go, if this is a little fast for you, feel free to just pause and rewind. Of course. Uh, I'll try to explain things, but if, if someone says I'm going too fast, well, that's the beauty of technology. 
can always rewind. Okay, so night blocks. Huh. If I take, he takes back. And then if I take, he takes back. Okay, no. Get this over here and have a triple force. He has a triple force, so I will create a triple force. Triple battery, he has a, he has a triple battery. And I will have a triple battery if I move my rook here. One, two, three. So, and then this knight is pinned. So the pin, meaning once I move here, also the discovered attack with the bishop. So by moving this rook here, I'm actually adding two defenders at the same, uh, two attackers at the same time. I will have one, two, three, four attackers. He will only have one, two, three defenders, which is awesome. And then I can't move out of the way or I'll win, I'll win a, a rook instead of a knight. So either way I win a piece. So the lesser of two evils is that he loses the knight. And I can't move or I win a rook. So then I win the knight. Boom. Okay, so that was the that, that's all it required for the, pu the puzzle. But basically, like I said, my next move is to take. He takes back. I take back. If he doesn't want to lose his queen, the queen's got to move out of the way. Essentially, I have more attackers than he does defenders. Remember, I have one, two, three, four. Oops, four. And he only has three. So that wins a piece. And if the knight, like I said, if the knight retreats, once again, I still have three attackers to his two defenders of this rook. So. All right. This is just a simple checkmate in one. Queen here, checkmate. I don't think they require explanations. It's just it's checkmate. The object of the game is to che is a checkmate. So if you have checkmate, go for it. All right, that's simple. Mate and one. Okay. All right. This is where this is called a fork. A fork is when you attack two pieces at the same time. This bishop moved here. It is pinning my knight. This knight cannot legally move because it would be check. So it is pinned. But this was still a bad move by him because I can move this pawn up here, threatening both pieces at the same time. He can only save one of the pieces and then I will capture the other piece. Both pieces are three point pieces and the pawn's only worth one point. So I will win that transaction. He, he decided to take and I take. So I won a bishop for a pawn, a three point piece for a one point pawn. Okay, that's called a fork. Didn't say fork here. I want to suggest, suggest a thing? Yeah. A fork. I like how you can suggest and they can improve because it didn't really involve these two themes in my opinion. But I can. It's for, it was a fork. I suggest the fork. Okay. That's not important. I'm just. I wanted to add it. Okay. Hmm. Okay. This is just checkmate in one. Boom. Nothing to it. Okay, he took my bishop. So for example, this knight can't move because I'll be in check. So the knight is pinned. I cannot legally move that piece. So. This one's not standing out obvious to me. This one's not obvious. Because he's threatening to win this with check, which is, which is not good for me. So the fact that since this is a puzzle, there's something to be done. Oh boy. This one's actually not easy for me. Supposed to be easy at uh, under a thousand for me. Okay. 
So my my instinct is to give check with either the rook or the, ah there it's a fork. Queen here check. It's, it's, it also attacks the undefended rook. So then, as the, after the king moves out of the way, my queen will take the rook, and it's worth more than the than the knight here. Check wins the rook. Okay. And then at this point, the puzzle's done. But if he if he takes with uh, the queen, uh, we'll trade the queens off, and I have two rooks to one rook. And if he takes the pawn instead, um, either way, I'm up, either way, I'm, I'm winning by a rook. This piece is a goner, but I'm I'm still winning by a rook. So. First, I wanted to move here because it threatens the rook, threatens the queen. But then, it w and if the queen moves out of the way, I can move. I can take the rook with checkmate. But that's but that that doesn't exist because he can just take. And then if I take, he takes back, check, and then he's forking my king, and he's going to win my bishop. So that is a very bad move. But you have to consider it. You know, you consider it. You think with your mind and not with your hand, or not with your mouse if you're playing on the computer, which is still operated by your hand. So, I've noticed that I also was considering taking this because it threatens checkmate, but my rook is undefended and he can take it with check. This pawn right here is very dangerous of becoming a new queen. I'm on a hot streak, 15 in a row. But uh, are they getting harder? I'm not sure if they're getting harder. Because I, I said all of them to be under a thousand, so. honest this is not standing out obvious to me Uh, maybe I let it happen anyway. Initially, I rejected this because I am threatening checkmate. He will take with check, and I, I just thought that was bad because he's winning a lot, a five-point piece. I won a three-point piece and threatening checkmate, which seems strong. But then he wins a five-point piece with check. The thing is, is that once my king moves up, I'm still threatening checkmate. And he can't, and the, pin, the, the pawn cannot take my bishop because then he'll be in check. So the only, and the, the only way for him to get out of this checkmate is to push the pawn, and then my queen will move around for the checkmate anyway. That seems a lot harder than a thousand-rated puzzle. I'm gonna do it. Yep, check. Move up, and that ended the puzzle. But 381, really? So that okay, let's let's. It was correct. Yeah, I'm threatening checkmate. And the only way, like I said, the only way to stop it. Yeah, he 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 can't continue with his pawn push to get a new queen, because I I get to the king first. So he has to push pawn to stop mate. My queen moves around, and nothing can be done to stop the mate here anyway. Let's do that one more time. So I rejected this initially because I thought. Him taking it with a him taking a stronger piece with check is bad, 
But it's because I have the threat of checkmate. It doesn't matter. If he pushes pawn, checkmate. If he stops the mate, I move here threatening checkmate and, and the queen and the rook have no defense to stop with the mate. You can do a spite check, sacrifice the queen just to delay the checkmate by one move, but I will have checkmate. So that seemed harder than 381. That was weird. I don't agree with the rating difficulty sometimes because that one was harder for me and it had a very low rating since we're doing under a thousand. Okay, this is just super easy. He, he, he had neglected his back rank. It's important to move one of your pawns and not expose your king to the back rank checkmates by, by moving the queen up. My rook just comes up check. The queen has to move back and I have checkmate. See, that was 850. What the? See, so yeah, look at that. 850 difficulty? When that was freaking easy? Versus the last one? So, yeah. These puzzles, these puzzle readings are whack. Okay. Ooh. All right. So this bishop's in the way. Uh, if this bishop, think about it. This is called a clearance sacrifice. If the bishop were not here, then the queen could just take the queen for checkmate. So if I move, so I can move here or here with check. One's the right answer, one's the wrong answer. If I move here, rook can take, queen cannot take, okay, first of all, the, the queen's pinned. If I move here, check. The queen cannot take because of the pin, but the rook can take, or even the king can take. Oh, wait, no. If the king takes, queen moves here, checkmate. Okay. Really cool checkmate. So the king can't take. But the rook can take, and no big deal. The rook now defends against the checkmates. So the rook can move here. Queen can't, like I said, queen can't take, because he'll be in check. So king can capture the bishop, and now the bishop's out of the way. Then queen can take queen, checkmate. Yeah. Okay, so last one. Pawn takes pawn. My queen is under attack. But, okay, so this is a discovered attack with a sacrifice. This rook, so right here, this queen is undefended and is in direct line of my queen. The rook can sacrifice itself with check. Okay? Black has to respond to the check. If, if, uh, if black takes the rook, then I win the queen. And then I win a queen for a rook. Pseudo sacrifice. Check. Takes the queen. Okay. This is a checkmate. Knight takes pawn. This is a checkmate. It's check. And the bishop covers the other two squares. So checkmate in one. He's so. These are all bad, bad moves that your opponent makes. But you have to learn to exploit your opponent. That's how you get better at chess, is noticing when your opponent makes a mistake and exploiting it. Also, by recognizing these patterns, you try to avoid making these same mistakes yourself. And it's not easy. It takes years of practice. Okay. This is attack. Okay, so it's attacking my queen. If my queen moves out of the way, he'll win the rook for the bishop. I can block with the pawn, no big deal. Also attacking the bishop. Okay, no, but even better. See, that was just my initial thought, but yeah. Oh, wait a minute, no. I was thinking about taking the bishop. I was thinking about taking, because then if he, he can't take, because then I'll take him. But my knight's pinned, because this rook can take my queen. So if I take this bishop, he takes my queen. So blocking is probably the, the right move. Yeah. Maybe this is just a defense puzzle. I have no attack, but at least not. This is a defense puzzle. Just making sure you don't you don't lose material. I think that's the right move. 
Um, I don't see anything else. I have no attacks. I'm under attack, so if my knight can't take it and my queen can't move out of the way without losing material, so that's your three. Op this is a defense puzzle. Your three options are to take, move the queen out of the way somewhere, for example, or block. So your three options to not lose your queen, but two of these result in you know this loses the queen. You know, moving the queen out of the way somewhere along this diagonal or wherever, I, you, I lose a five-point piece. Okay, that's, yeah, if I move here, for example, lose a five-point piece, recapture the bishop, but then I lost a five-point piece for a three-point piece. So the block is the only way I see to stop all of that. No, my first incorrect one! <laughs> huh. Huh. I got one wrong. Well, maybe I'll stop the the video after this. If I get another one, if I get another one wrong, I'll stop the video. Huh. I, that's why. See, see, that's why I had doubts when I said I think this is the right answer. I didn't move it initially. I analyzed, and I came to the conclusion that it was the right answer, and it's still wrong. So. <laughs> ah, idiot. I'm such an idiot. Uh, I'm actually a little tired. Uh, no excuse, but uh, I slept like five hours last night, so I'm getting most of these right because they're beginner puzzles, but uh, my mind isn't the best. But idiot, idiot. Queen just takes bishop, and if queen wants to take, I get the queen back. Okay. Queen takes. And then if he takes, I take. So in the end, I, w I have two attackers, and he only has one defender. And if I take bishop, if I take bishop, and he... And now I'm also th and now I'm also threatening the queen. The queen's undefended. So he doesn't have time to, like, remove my defender, because then I'll win his queen. That's it. Yeah, takes, and then I take. Oh, stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> oh, it changes to a... I got it wrong initially, but that's that's let's do it. Let's do it one more time. So yeah, just m only has one defender, but I have two attackers. But don't take with the knight, cause I'll lose the queen. So take with the queen, and then I get the queen back. Oh my god, how embarrassing. Okay. Okay, knight here is just checkmate. It guards the other square. And then I can't be captured. This is checkmate. Rook up here is checkmate. The pawn guards the other two squares. What did he take? I took my pawn. He's threatening to get a queen with check. And I cannot stop it. But I have checkmate in one. So, no big deal. Three checkmates and one in a row. Easy, easy peasy. Okay. This isn't check. This would be checkmate if the queen weren't here to come and block. But I don't. This is the <laughs> this is the first of its kind. Okay, this is a def this is not. Look, if you look here, white black is kicking my ass. Queen and two pawns versus a queen and five pawns and a knight. Essentially, this game would be lost for white. There's just too many pawns that can become queens. Black really wants to trade the queens off, and then this is just this is just easy. If black can trade the queens off, then uh, white, then a black will win, because it's the it's the last white piece. However, it's white's move, so I thought moving here, check, it's not mate because the queen can block, but I can come back down and take the pawn check again, 
queen has to block. And then I move over here, check, queen has to block. And I can go back and forth forever. I can, I, this is called perpetual check. It can save you, it can save the game sometimes. If you're in a losing position, look for perpetual checks, especially with the queens on the board. Queens, queens are good for, for, for perpetual checks when the king is vulnerable, the enemy king is vulnerable. And so in this case, I can check infinitely and black cannot make any progress. And in the rules of chess, if the same position repeats three times, it's a draw because it can be theoretically repeated forever. So check, take the pawn, blocks again. I can't go back here because he'll take me. So I, I'll just go over here instead. All right. And nothing black can do about it. Black has all these extra pieces, extra, extra knight, ex three extra pawns or two extra pawns. Three passed pawns, but he's going to have to block. I come back. Has to block. I go back. Has to block. And for and that trip repeats three times. So this is a, yep, theme, perpetual check. This saves the game sometimes. If you're in a losing, situa if you're in a losing situation, you, this is a draw. Perpetual check is a draw. But hey, a draw is better than a loss. So sometimes these puzzles are hard to find. Like, you have to assess that you cannot win, but you can at least get the draw. All right. Ooh, okay. So king moved here. If my queen comes up here, check. This rook covers all this. So if I go queen up, check, the queen has to block. Okay? Queen here. Queen has to block. But don't trade queens. That's just equal. Remove the defender, even if it means sacrificing. Because look, check. Queen blocks, but then rook comes up, check. And now if the if the king captures the rook, I capture the queen. Okay, and then I win a queen for a rook. Because right now I'm down a piece, so I could really use this. Check. 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 And so I won. That was a really cool, um, they call it deflection. Deflection? Yeah, deflection is when you force a piece to move out of the way. It's kind of like remove the defender, except I think of remove the defender as then killing the defender. Remove the defender by killing it, you, and then you can win something bigger. In this case, I had to sacrifice a piece, forcing the king to move away, which is, is a defender, but it's called deflection. I deflected the, the king. Which was still a defender of the queen. So in a sense, it's, it's removed the defender as well. Now, two rooks versus a queen. This is still a difficult game going forward. I, um, queen versus two rooks is about equal, if as long as the rooks are, are coordinated, which they are. But white has two extra pawns, so there's a good chance that white can win this game. But it won't be an easy game. But that was the puzzle, so... Okay, this is called a skewer. This is our first skewer of the of the lesson. So if rook comes up here, check. The king can kill my pawn, but then I'm going to kill the rook behind it. So no matter where the king moves, I'm going to win the rook behind it. So a skewer, in a sense, is an opposite of a pin. A pin is where you can't move a piece because a, a greater piece will be captured behind it. A skewer is the opposite. You attack a stronger piece, forcing it to move, and then you capture the weaker piece behind. So I think of uh, skewers and, and pins as opposites. So rook moves up, check. He took, and I get the rook. And this is going to be an easy win. Um, the rook can pick off some pawns. All right. I'm going to stop this video at an hour, so... See how many I can do in an hour. I could do a lot more in an hour, but since I'm explaining them all, I've only gotten to 27 and 30, 39 minutes. So, hmm. My instinct is to want to go here, check, forcing the king to move here or here. If queen goes here, check. He can't go here because then I can push pawn up, check, forking the king and the queen. I will win the queen for a pawn. An amazing fork. So it forces him to go here instead. The 
the thing is, is I, I don't, ah, then I push this pawn up, forcing him to go to the back to the square anyway, and then I get my fork anyway. Okay, that's a little more complex, but, okay, one more time, check, he doesn't go here because of the fork, so, check, he goes here instead, I give a check with this pawn, he only has one legal move, is to move to the square he doesn't want to go, I get the fork anyway, check. Oh, actually, that's checkmate, nope, not checkmate, not checkmate, because the king can eat the pawn, but I don't care because I'm killing the queen. Check. And he, and he moved to the bad square anyway. So, the, so sometimes the, the... I wish I really wish the computer would... I guess it depends on the, the difficulty of the puzzle. So he went to the bad square, and then I just get, I just get my fork in. Okay? He could have... But the, the point, the, the, the key thing is that I, you should always assume that your opponent will make the best move. He doesn't always make the best move, as you can see. Um, I, this could be the same puzzle with a harder difficulty, not much harder, but um, where he goes to the other square. So even though you don't see the whole sequence play out, you have all the sequences play out, you have to analyze all possible... If I go here, then he goes here. Then if I go here, then he goes here. But that's simple. Sometimes it's forced. But if I, if I say, if I go here, he has three options. I have to analyze all three options from my opponent, and then do I have three options to his three options, and then sometimes he might have three options to those three options, three times three is not, then it becomes an ent a tangled mess, but that gets better with, with practice. So in this case, he made it easy for me. He made it easy for me where he went to the bad square. But had he gone here, I could force him to the bad square anyway. And that's important to know, because if you don't see that, then if you don't see that, then you won't know that this is the right move. Sometimes a move that looks good is actually bad, or not the best move, just because you didn't consider one branch of a branch of a branch of a branch. So, yeah. Okay. Like, for example, sometimes the puzzle ends immediately when you do the fork. In this case, he moved, and I had to capture the queen before the puzzle ended. The puzzle, Based on the difficulty of the puzzle, it decides, um, it decides when they want to stop. So, all right. It's a really great program. Chess.com is amazing. Um, they're not paying me to say this. I wish they were. Okay. All right, so I would love... Okay, this is a remove the defender. I would love to move up here, check, back rank checkmate, right? Except there's a rook stopping me. So remove that defender. I... I, I noticed that immediately. I, I can't take it. I can't take this queen because I'll be in check. So that, that's out of the question. So remove the defender. Take with check. Normally you wouldn't want to sacrifice a nine-point piece for a five-point piece, but you are. But you're getting something back in return, which is the king via checkmate. He takes back. Rook moves up and it's mate. So this is remove the defender. Check. Checkmate. Okay, so he took a pawn. He thinks he's being clever because if I take back, he wins the rook behind. So essentially, my bishop is pinned. It's pinned this to, It's pinned in that sense. I take. He wins the stronger piece behind. But I can go here instead because it's check. Check checks are very powerful because your opponent has to respond to check. Check. It's obligatory to get your king out of check. And so by moving here instead, check, he can take it. Then I'm going to win the stronger piece behind. It's only because it's check. I move here. He would love he would love to take my rook. Okay? But because it's check, he has to get out of check. And I win a stronger I win a five point piece for a three point piece. Alright, 30 puzzles. Okay. Sometimes I don't see what they take. I sometimes go back just to see what they tell. Okay, he took a knight. It just gives me some idea in the position. You don't really need to know that, but sometimes I need. I just want to know if he took a big piece or something. Okay. Queen up, check. 
If the bishop blocks, you have checkmate. Okay? That's one tree branch. But the knight can take you. But then you have this pawn in the seventh rank that can take back, getting a new queen anyway. Check. Bishop blocks. Queen takes. These do not seem like beginner, beginner, beginner puzzles. I'm going to do another uh, video after this. Uh, I'm going to reduce the difficulty to 500 so that the puzzles are even easier. And just let me know if this was too difficult for ultimate. This is an ultimate beginner. This is basically like beginners that have experience. Some experience with chess. If you've been playing for a year or two, these puzzles are should be fairly easy. But if you're new to chess, some of these are pretty hard, and my explanations seem more complicated than I had. I, these are harder than I anticipated for this video, even though I've gotten all but one correct. Uh, all but one. Uh, no, yeah, I've gotten all of them but one correct. <laughs> okay, so queen moves up, check. Knight takes. I get a new queen anyway. Bishop has to block, and then I have checkmate. Okay. Mate in three. Okay, this is a mate in two. This this was just a bad move. It exposes the king on this diagonal. Okay. So, queen goes here, check. The king has to move here. And then queen goes here, checkmate, because the knight is protecting the queen. And protecting, all right? King can't escape here because the knight covers that square. Check, mate in two. Check. Checkmate. Okay. Okay, so this I'm attacking this rook, but he's defending it. I can skewer. I can skewer it. I can move up here. Check. King has to move down, and then I can take the rook, and it's checkmate because um, the king can't take back because it's defended by the rook. So one more time. Check. King moves down. Queen takes rook. Checkmate. Mate in two. Ah, okay, this is cool. All right, this is a pseudo second. Okay, so this bishop covers like, once again this diagonal covers this square. Therefore, there are potential backmate threats. There's no backmate threat here because the rook can block, and it's defended by a bishop. Wait, or is it? No, actually, that's the right that's the right move. If <laughs> see. Sometimes, I, like I was thinking, doing taking here, and then if he if he takes, he can't take back because then I have checkmate, right? So then I essentially I'm winning a rook. Great, winning a rook is pretty good. That would be a good. That's a good move. That's a good move to his. You know, this was a blunder by Black. This would be. This is a good move because he cannot take because of checkmate, but it's not forced. He doesn't have to take. He can just do something else, and then the game goes on. It's, if you have a forced checkmate, that's always better. So at first I thought, well, if I move here, he can block with the, with the rook. And it's defended by the bishop, so I don't have my checkmate. But it still forces the bishop to move. It forces the bishop to move, whether it's moving here or moving here. Here it's forced because it has to stop the checkmate. Okay, so if I move here, check. Rook blocks. Rook takes check. The only way to get out of checkmate is get out of checkmate. You can't get out of checkmate, but you know, get out of check. Uh, he has to take, and now the bishop now the bishop's out of the way. The other rook can come up for the mate. That's more forcing because it leads to checkmate, and the game the game's over. So if I went if I went this route and took the rook first, it would say incorrect, even though you're winning a rook. Why win a rook when you can win a king? Why be a king? You can be a god. Eminem. Rap god. Check. Takes. Checkmate. Okay. I'm sensing a queen trap. This pawn here, this queen is very, very limited range. Surrounded by its own pieces. I feel like pushing pawn up here. Tra yeah, that traps the queen. If I push pawn up, queen can't go here because I'll take with the queen. Queen can't go here because I'll take with the pawn. Queen can't go here because I'll take with the rook. Queen can't go here because I'll take with the pawn. 
Oh wait, but it can go here. No, no, it can't, because my queen's here. My, I, 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 when I draw too many arrows, sometimes I forget where all the pieces are. That takes practice when you're playing. You have to keep mentally keep track of where all the pieces are. When you're figuring out a combination, a sequence, you have to... Sometimes when I'm playing a real game in a tournament or whatever, if the sequence is really, really long, sometimes, I, I mean, as soon as I blink, I lose track. Depends on my concentration. This is where sleep is important for good chess, eating healthy, protein, energy, don't be hung over, etc. <laughs> and so, because it's all about focus. All right, so attack the queen, and it can't go here because of the queen. Can't go here because of the pawn. Can't go here because of the pawn. Can't go here because of the queen. Here because of the rooks. Can't take the pawn because of the other pawns. Can't go here because of the rooks. Can't take this pawn because of the... Yeah, it's the queen's tra It's a queen trap. Yeah. So the queen moves down. Don't take with queen because then he'll take your queen. And that's just a trade. Then I take and then he takes. Take with the weaker piece. So I get the queen for a rook. Now he'll take back or take back, but I got a queen for a rook. Okay. We're at 51 minutes right now, so we'll see if I get to 40. Let's get to 40 puzzles. Okay. We'll stop there. 40 puzzles in one hour seems pretty good with, with explanations. So, okay, knight here. Hmm. Hey, I mean, uh, uh, the problem with... Uh, Ooh, this is tricky because if I take with if I take this knight, which looks nice, this pawn can move down. Check, check because from the queen. And so the king has to move out of the way, and then he gets the knight back anyway with the pawn. Do not want, do definitely don't want to take this rook. If I take this rook with either piece, that's a huge blunder. Because then the pawn will take, and that discovered check, I lose the queen. One more time. If I take this, he takes back, check. Check, okay? And when I get out of check, this pawn, this pawn that's here is going to eat my queen. So uh, this rook is invincible. I cannot take that rook. So take take the knight like I initially said. If pawn moves down, hmm. ah, dude, crazy. This queen is so dangerous on this diagonal because of this pawn moving out of the way. If I push this pawn up, the queen can no longer stay on this diagonal. The queen can munch on this pawn. It's no longer defended. But then I'm going to munch on the knight. Because, and, uh, not, and not take the rook because otherwise the knight will take my queen. So, pawn up. Say he, no matter where he goes, he's no longer going to have that check that check threat. If he takes, for example, I take, which is also threatening his queen. That's here now. And when he uh, takes back, either way, I'm getting out of this mess. So, and it's incorrect. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> well, might not get to forty in in one hour. I got, I got six minutes. Does it take the knight? I don't want to guess. It, that was it. And to be honest, oh, I kept talking about, I kept talking about, uh, Silly me. By taking it, it ends the puzzle. He does, okay, he does have this check. And once I get out of check. Ah, no! I had another way of getting out of check. 
I, I thought this was my only option to get out of check, which allows him to recover the piece that he just lost after check. But I can push this pawn up, blocking the check, and it's also attacking the queen. And then when the queen goes to safety, um, I can move this knight out of the way or capture this sweet rook or something. Yeah, that was why. Taking, okay, so one more time real quick. I messed up, but take, if he goes here, check. I push up, attacking the queen. He can, the queen has to go somewhere, and I'm going to eat this nice rook, preferably with a knight, so that he doesn't take my knight afterwards. Yeah, that was the solution. Okay, four minutes, four more puzzles. Okay, this is called a smother's mate. I immediately recognize this pattern by by moving the knight here, it's double check. This is our first double check of the video. Double check, you cannot capture, but when you're in double check, means the piece moves out of the way, queen is giving check, but the knight is also giving check. When you're in double check, you cannot, you, you do not have time. You're not allowed to take both pieces. You can't move twice and you can't block. You can't block a knight, so, cause knights jump. So the king is forced to move. So this is the first one. He said, like I said, he can't take the knight that's giving check because there's another piece giving check. He has to get out of check from both pieces, forcing the king to move back. This is where the queen sacrifices itself here. Check. Sacrificing itself, check. The king cannot take because the knight, because of check by the knight. So the rook is forced to take. And now the king is smothered by his own pieces, and the lonely knight gives the smothered mate. I love smothered mates. They don't happen too often in, in real games because if you're playing an opponent that knows the pattern too, but it's, it's good to learn. Check, he has to take with a rook, and the lonely knight gives the checkmate. Mate in three, smothered mate. Queen's, smothered mate always required, always involves the queen sacrifice normally. Almost always, all right. In this case, knight takes pawn check. It's checked by the end, yeah. My queen's not defended, but he cannot take the queen because he's in check by my knight. And he cannot take my knight either, because then he'll be he'll be in check by my queen. So by taking here, the king has to move. Okay, here or here. And then I want to take this nice rook in the corner. All right, but I can't immediately because he'll take my queen. My queen is undefended. So I have to exchange the queens off first. Check, he recovers the queen. And then I can take my rook in the corner. Okay. So check. That's more complicated. These are not, be not all these are really beginner puzzles. Check. He moved over here. Like I said, I want to take, but I have to trade off the queens first. So check again. He recovers. And then I can win the rook. Okay. That's complicated. Not, I mean, I saw the puzzle immediately, but all right, I got two minutes for two more puzzles. Holy crap. If I push my pawn, okay. This is the only pawn for victory. If I push, yeah, to push the pawn. He's trying to get his own pawn pushed, but this is silly. I will promote first. If he push, yeah, I, even though he has more pawns than me, sometimes more advanced pawns are what's important. My, I promote first, and so I can start giving checks, checks, etc., and start picking up pawns with my queen. Um, he didn't play the best move. Let's go back real quick. If I go here, he he should if he's if he's a good player, he should know that I'm going to win this pawn race. Oh, and I also also once I promote, I'm promoting with check. That's why he moved his king out of the way. Because if I go here, he goes here, and then I go here. And then he's one away from promoting himself. I promote and get my queen. He can't get his queen because of check. And since it's check, he has to move. Yeah, I, I, I get I get for I get it first. I get the queen first, so that that's it. And if he decided to go defensive and like move his king over here, I don't push immediately because the king can stop it. Okay. No, my bad. I go here, he goes here, I go here. Never mind, the king cannot stop it. The king, my king is being a bodyguard and, and supporting. The king doesn't have time to go around, so I get the queen first, even though 
white has more pawns. Even though white has more pawns, uh, even though white has more pawns, black will win this game because I promote first. All right, we got. It's been one hour. Let's do the final puzzle. Okay. All right, this is the mating two. Rook comes down, check, and then these two lasers. Oops. These two lasers force the king. Damn it. Force the king to go back to the somewhere on the back row, and then this rook can come up and check. So these two rooks work and work together. Check. King has to go back, followed by checkmate. All right, that was one hour. All right, guys, 40 problems in one hour. If uh, that was too fast or uh, those were too complicated, you can rewatch the video. Uh, I might do some easier puzzles if because uh, I didn't realize that I only got two wrong initially and I corrected them. But uh, yeah, that was quite an experience. But I feel like a lot of those puzzles involved three or four move combinations, which are really, really hard for the ultimate beginner. So... They were all easy for me, except for the two I got wrong. <laughs> so, uh, that's why in chess it's important to think it through. Even with, even with my knowledge and my 2,000 rating, me doing puzzles with 1,000 difficulty, I still got two wrong. So they all weren't super easy, even for me. Most of them were easy for me, but I'm the teacher. so um, It just takes practice, guys. So let me know what you, thought, what you think, and uh, I plan to do maybe an easier beginner, with like under 500. And then I'll increase with difficulty, go from 100. I'll increase every maybe 500 reading points or something. All right. Thanks a lot, guys.